hi in this video let's discuss the next set of questions starting with pika so which anemia is associated with pika iron deficiency anemia we'll go through some literature so pika is a psychological disorder characterized by an appetite for substances that are largely non-nutritive it's very interesting so appetite for various substances non-nutritive take for example ice it's called as pagophagia hair trichophagia paper xylophagia drywall or paint metal metallophagia stones lithophagia soil geophagia glass hyalophagia feces coprophagia and even chalk right so it's a psychological disorder characterized by an appetite for substances that are largely non-nutritive so in one of the references, it's clearly mentioned that Pika is most common in those with developmental disabilities, including autism, mental retardation, as well as in children. Apart from sporadic cases due to a specific underlying psychiatric disorder, Pika also features a culture-bound syndrome worldwide. Iron deficiency is one peculiar finding quite commonly associated with Pika. So this is one point which I actually wanted to highlight. So anemia, dwarfism, hypogonadism have been related to clay eating among children, women and in rural areas of several countries worldwide. Right? I hope it's clear. Now, moving on to the next question pertaining to accelerators and retarders in gypsum and their influence on strength. In Philips, it's clearly mentioned that these accelerators and retarders have the potential to decrease dry as well as wet strength. We'll go through some literature. The addition of an accelerator or retarder lowers both wet strength and dry strength of gypsum product. Such a decrease in strength can be partially attributed to the salt added as an adulterant and to the reduction in intercrystalline cohesion. Right? Now, moving on to the next question, iron deficiency anemia, various lab characteristics or biochemical values. So iron deficiency anemia, as you can see, when we compare a normal cell with that of uh, RBC in iron deficiency, there is microcytic hypochromic red cell. Also, there is decrease in MCV, MCH and MCHC right and you can also see various bone marrow changes now coming to lab findings the development of anemia progresses in three stages first storage iron depletion second iron deficient erythropoiesis final stage is frank iron deficiency anemia and most importantly if you look into the biochemical findings the serum iron level is low under 50 micrograms per deciliter the normal range is 40 to 140 micrograms per deciliter total iron binding capacity increases right normal is 250 to 450 micrograms per deciliter and this total iron binding capacity increases and rises to give less than 10 percent saturation in anemia of chronic disorders however serum iron as well as tibc are reduced so this is how you can differentiate other anemias from that of iron deficiency anemia and serum ferritin is very low normal is 30 to 250 nanograms per milliliter indicating poor tissue iron stores the serum ferritin is raised in iron overload and is normal in anemia of chronic disorders right and red cell protoporphyrin is very low serum transferrin receptor protein which is normally present on developing erythroid cells and reflects total red cell mass is raised in case of iron deficiency due to its release in circulation right so these are various biochemical findings in case of iron deficiency anemia for that matter all anemias biochemical findings lab characteristics are very very important now another question pertaining to the anatomic location or opening of Stenson's duct pertaining to parotid gland so the duct of parotid gland opening from the cheek into vestibule of mouth opposite to the neck of superior or maxillary second molar tooth right so this is one question which most of you might have answered very confidently right so it's the Stenson's duct opens opposite maxillary second molar tooth now moving on to the next topic, hemlick maneuver. So when do you go for this hemlick maneuver? So in emergencies, when there is foreign body obstruction in airways, we go for this hemlick maneuver. So we'll go through some literature. Hemlick maneuver is used when a person is choking on a foreign object to the extent that he or she cannot breathe. Oxygen deprivation from a foreign body airway obstruction can result in permanent brain damage or death in four minutes or even less than four minutes, right? 
that's hemlich maneuver and as you can see in the image you can clearly see how hemlich maneuver is being performed right now moving on to the next topic malignant hypothermia treatment so dantrolin directly acting muscle relaxant skeletal muscle relaxant intravenous is a drug of choice to treat malignant hypothermia we'll go through some literature dantrolin directly acting muscle relaxant is chemically and pharmacologically entirely different from other neuromuscular blockers it doesn't affect neuromuscular transmission or map but uncouples contraction from depolarization of muscle membrane depolarization triggered release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum is reduced and it's used intravenous and it's a drug of choice for malignant hypothermia which is due to persistent release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum which is induced by fluorinated anesthetics and succinylcholine in genetically susceptible individuals right now moving on to the next topic couple so uh, there seems to be a question on the same two forces equal in magnitude opposite in direction it's nothing but couple isn't it now also there seems to be a question on slop rule same side ling will opposite side buckle i'll try to give you the question uh, which i uh, got from few of the aspirants what is the position of mesiodens appearing right to central incisors while the cone is placed with left angulation so it means that you're shifting the cone towards left but the object seems to be shifting towards right so opposite side right so same side it's lingual opposite side it's buckle so let me try to reframe it in simple words possible if the object in the radiograph moves in the direction of the tube or the cone it's present lingually if the object moves away from the tube or opposite side of that of the tube's orientation then it's present buckle same side lingual opposite side buckle also called as tube shift technique or clark's rule right we have discussed in detail about clark's rule in our classes you can refer that for more information now moving on to the penultimate topic inlay wax coefficient of thermal expansion so you have all the values given in philips you can uh, look into the table right now so coefficients of thermal expansion of dental materials compared with those of tooth enamel and dentin inlay wax it's the highest around 400 and when you compare this with that of tooth enamel the ratio is 35 almost even this ratio seems to be highest when compared to other materials right so 400 seems to be the coefficient of thermal expansion of inlay wax right it's a wax so it's obviously understood that the coefficient of thermal expansion is going to be high but quantification is also important so you can see all the values in the table given here now moving on to the final topic of today's video objective fear in child so fear can be different types innate subject to objective we'll go through some literature so i think there is a question on the same a child has objective fear because of family neighbors own past experiences so own past experiences is more appropriate or it fits more appropriately under the category objective fear so we'll go through some literature now fear is a reaction to a known danger its source is consciousness it may be defined as an unpleasant emotion or effect consisting of psychophysiological changes in response to a realistic threat or danger to one's own experience so often we experience fear especially during entrance exams isn't it so there are different types of fears innate fear without stimuli or previous experience objective fear those which are acquired objectively or those produced by direct physical stimulation of sense organs fears from previous unpleasant contact with dentistry unrelated experiences like repeated hospitalization leading to fear of uniforms etc and coming to subjective fears they are based on feelings and attitudes suggested to the child by others like it can be uh, friends family colleagues or it can be even information media like tv right papers comics so these uh, subjective fears are again of different types we have imitative fears suggestive fears or imaginative fears so we'll discuss in detail about fears elsewhere and these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this specific video i hope it's clear